can see, Pastor Corky's not here today, which he may have made that announcement. I, I can't remember, but uh, no fear. He's coming back. <laughs> He'll be back on uh, next Sunday, and he will be with us till the very end of June. So he stays with us till June the 30th, and then he, he leaves and goes, I think, back to Kansas. Um, so as far as our vote went last week and the um, new pastor, Pastor David Steer, he has sent his letter back of acceptance to our call, so he is our pastor. So that's a good thing. And so he starts, I believe, the very end of July. So I'm not sure the exact date, but it's going to be right there near the end of July. So we'll have a few Sundays we have to kind of make it through. And anyway, we'll make it through um, as far as the service goes. So a little bit about announcements. Of course, there's no communion today. Um, and I want to say a special, uh, I guess, I don't know, it ain't really a thank you, but just a special something, something for the Rollins. They're celebrating their anniversary today, and thank you for the flowers. Uh, I don't know how many years, <laughs> but I know it's 45. Okay, 45. Um, good. Also, uh, next Sunday, we'll have a luncheon after the service for Pastor Corky, and this was um, his, his wishes that we would have, you know, our luncheon early in the month instead of at the very end. So uh, anybody that wants to um, help as far as the men goes, the men of Bible, just see me and see Ron up here after the service today. We'll be providing the meat, cooking all the meat. We're going to grill uh, some of the things that I think Corky would like us to grill. So we we will be doing that on Saturday um, evening. Um, there will be covered dish for everything else. Just everybody bring a covered dish for the lunch. Uh, baby shower, of course. Congregation is invited for the baby shower for Emma and John Ratchford, and that's June the 9th. And uh, it'll be here at the Fellowship Hall. And VBS starts the week after that, I believe. Uh, so anybody with VBS concerns, just see Miss Leslie or see Miss Connie, see some of the ladies here that's involved. Um, BYG News, they'll be back in full force, uh, I guess, here at the end of the month and, and in through the summer with their summer projects. So don't forget about the donated items they're asking for, the cleaning supplies to hand out to our neighborhoods. And then the last thing I have on my list is uh, ongoing prison needs. Uh, Grits has been made aware, the Grits ladies has been made aware of some uh, needs in our area that are, I guess, more like toothpaste, odorant, soap, stuff like that. If you have that, can bring that, they'll uh, share that at the, with the prison ministry. Uh, are there any announcements I'm missing? Yes, Carrie. Hallelujah Express is in the fellowship hall right now for all the kids. Okay. And I'm leaving you. So, okay. Here, yep, so Hallelujah Express is up and going, and don't miss the train. It's back in the back. Um, anybody else? Uh, usually, our group group at the end of the year uh, go on a, a fun activity. thing I just want us to think about and uh, remember is, of course, our upcoming Memorial Day. Um, you know, uh, it's just a word of gratitude for all our military family who lost loved ones and the ultimate sacrifice for our earthly freedoms and for those who believe in Christ and know his ultimate sacrifice has, he has won the final war over death. And uh, one day we can rejoice with Jesus just like our first hymn will explain today. So again, just keep all those in memory and in mind of from Memorial Day. And we will begin our service with the prelude.
you stand. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us share that peace. Continue with the Kyrie. In, in this spoken, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Our entrance hymn, Holy, 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 page 165.
if you'll be seated, uh, we're going to have some special music. Um, Juliana is going to sing us a song. Before I sing, I just ask that um, the Spirit move through you while I sing and that you open your hearts and prepare your minds for the sermon. Say 
please stand. Majestic Trinity, mystery of three and one and one and three, we worship you. Before time, your love burst forth, creating the world in which you took delight. Strengthen us in our faith, defend us from all evil temptations, and bring us into the everlasting presence of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll have our first reading. reading is from the book of Isaiah chapter 6 beginning at the first verse and if you want to follow along in the pew bible that can be found on page 678 in the year that king Uzziah died I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and the train of his throne the train of his robe filled the temple above him stood the seraphim each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2, a variety of verses beginning at 14, and that is on page 1081 of the Pew Bible. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the land, hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, 
But he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Here ends the second reading. St. John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 21. And this is in a different Bible, so it may not match what you have there. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, and he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one, can see, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into a mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe it if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that is the light has come into the world, and the people love darkness rather than the light, because of their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. So today is Trinity Sunday, and um, it's kind of hard maybe to think about or talk about sometimes because it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, the doctrine of the Trinity has been controversial since the earliest of days. In A.D. 325, the Council of Nicaea affirmed its belief in the triune Godhead. Then in the late 15th and 16th century, during the Reformation period, it was again denied and debated by Socians and liberal theolo theologians today still debate parts of the Trinity meaning. A way I can somewhat explain it is our most essential element, which is water. And you probably have heard this example before. But it's a liquid, and then frozen, it's a solid, and then when heated, it's a gas or steam. Um, but it's still the same thing, it's water. 
Um, and now when I say gas, I don't really know if that's the correct way to say that because you probably can't burn water, but uh, yeah, vapor, but anyway, it can make electricity, so it can be uh, energy, I guess. Um, so let's see what points our gospel has today on the Trinity and who the two main characters, Nicodemus and Jesus, are talking about. And so I've gotten help from Pastor Corky, of course, on some of this, and then some of it's my own. But, uh, and it's titled Nick at Night. <laughs> so today, again, we observe, or a better word, we uh, think about the mystery of the tr Holy Trinity. Uh, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a particular and peculiar Christian concept. You will not find the word Trinity in your Bible. You will find the word, the Trinitarian formula, but uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but not the actual word Trinity. Uh, Trinity was a shorthand way of pointing to that formula. <clears throat> it is a word that describes but does not explain God encountered by those early followers of Jesus. They had encountered a God as Creator, Son as Savior, and Spirit as Comforter. Um, but there was nothing like this in Jewish thought. Uh, Jesus' resurrection and ascension and the coming of the Spirit on this day, after much reflection, brought this understanding of God to life. Luther claimed that you could talk about and explore um, the Trinity all day long and never exhaust that conversation or exploration. Today, using John's gospel story as a guide, we'll talk some, some about the shy member of the Trinity, which is the Holy Spirit. Uh, John alone mentions Nicodemus. Twice he is labeled a Pharisee, once called a secret follower of Jesus. So Nick comes at night to converse with Jesus. Now that could mean he sought Jesus' undivided attention, or that he got that, but maybe it was more than he bargained for. It could mean that he came in fear and was afraid to let the other good Jews know that this radical Jesus had somehow caught his attention. Maybe since this is John's writing, both are true. Whatever the reason, Nick at night is rather an astonishing development. So some points to consider. Uh, the clues we have in Scripture indicate that Nicodemus was a wealthy person. Uh, he was part of the Sanhedrin, which is the govern, governing council of the Jews. He was educated. He was influential. Um, why would such a man seek out an audience with a man that is essentially homeless? Nicodemus was one of the most powerful men in his society. Why affiliate with one who is openly talking, taking on that power and is destined to die an ugly death as a direct result? Uh, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Jesus, although he agreed with many points of that theology, was clearly not and had no intention of becoming one. He was trying to destroy that entire way of approaching God and faith. So why does he engage Jesus in theological wrangling? The only answer seems to be that Nick saw something in Jesus he lacked and wanted. That is, he recognized the hand of God in Jesus' words and action. And that is astonishing. It means that Nick's opening words of flattery just might have been an honest assessment, meaning something like, your signs and wonders indicate to me that you come from God. They fulfill the predictions of Scripture concerning the Messiah, but in ways different from what I expected. Help me to understand. So Jesus tries to explain. Don't, he exhorts, focus on the fluff. The heart of the matter is totally transformation. It is like being born anew. That is the only way into the kingdom of God. Anything else is a waste of time. Nicodemus chooses to play dumb. 
as a biblical scholar, he would have been familiar with a born again concept. But acknowledging that would have meant his thousands of hours of diligent living by hundreds of thousands of laws and rules would have been for nothing. He wasn't ready to admit that yet, so he plays dumb. He is very much like us here. We know the way, the truth, and the life. We hear God's call to go down a certain path and not another, yet we choose to play dumb. You know how that goes. It goes like this. You call a friend or a family member and you uh, come in and they pretend not to hear you or look to you as if to say, are you talking to me? It's a game we all play even if we refuse to admit it. But Jesus goes along and attempts to reason the explanation. Look, Jesus says, you cannot make it on your own efforts. What I am describing to you, what I'm describing is a work of God's spirit. Like the wind, you can't see it, but you can see what it does. God's wind, God's spirit is the same. Blowing into the life of whomever God chooses, and then you can receive the results, a transformed life. Now Nicodemus plays dumb and dumber. Duh, what? Jesus finally shows some expiration. You're the great teacher of Israel, and you don't get these illustrations. You'll surely never get anything I say if this is really so. Have you ever thought that this could be me or you uh, here today? Are we spiritually born again? Jesus continues, <clears throat> you'll surely never understand my dying on a cross and never know life with God. I can't help but wonder if Jesus is teasing Nicodemus here with a play on words. In both Greek and Hebrew, one word can be translated as either breath or wind or spirit. There's a book on, about the Great Plains and it has this brief story in it. In the mid-1960s, a driving winter wind pushes five empty boxcars 90 miles east along a track in North Dakota. The power of the Holy Spirit can push a life so far down the track of faith. The only way to really describe it, that new life, is to say that that person has been born again. John 3.16, you can probably recite it off the top of your head, but have you ever thought about, is John quoting Jesus, or is he stating a summary of the points Jesus was trying to make with Nicodemus? In the original, there is no punctuation to help us determine that, but the tense changes suddenly strongly suggest that this is a summary statement. Either way, it's beauty. Luther called it the gospel within the gospel. God loves every single person who has ever lived or will ever live so much that he sent his son to pull us out of the pit of sin and death and the certainty of our destruction. Jesus didn't come to condemn us, to say you made your bed and now you've got to sleep in it, or to shake his finger at you saying, <clears throat> I told you so. No, Jesus came to offer us salvation, to offer us life with God here and in the future. We can't even begin to imagine what that will be like. That's what, the, that's what he held out to Nicodemus, and that's what he holds out to us. And by the way, Nicodemus, who begins this journey with Jesus, earnestly and slowly develops, through John's narrative, a stiffening backbone. Near the end of John 7, he dares to slow down the railroad of Jesus to an early grave, but he tries. And then again in John 19, near the end, he fully comes out of the closet and lovingly prepares Jesus' body for burial. Seems like he finally understood what Jesus was driving at. Seems he accepted the grace of God working in his life. 
and the wind of spirit blowing him down the track toward a new birth. So how about you? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day, and thank you for your words. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to dwell with us and in us a spirit of renewal, that we will continue to have a new birth experience with you. Lord, just ask that you be with Pastor Steer and be with Pastor Corky as our transition takes place. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We will now sing our hymn. <laughs> Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the cross, died, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. As we remember Memorial Day, we know you are holy and righteous, Lord. 
You created us. You created us in your image. Grant us grace to continue, continue fearlessly against evil and to make no peace with oppression. I ask, Lord, that we remember those who lost their lives defending our freedoms, helping to bring justice among people and the nations. <clears throat> to the glory of your name, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, please send your blessings and guidance to those who hold office in the government of our cities and Effingham County. We pray your Holy Spirit will rest upon each leader that they may do their work in a spirit of wisdom, kindness, and justice. Help them use their authority to serve faithfully and to promote general welfare for all those they serve. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, strengthen the weak and send comfort to those who are suffering in our congregation. We pray for Joanne, Karen's sister-in-law, Daniel Trowell, continue prayers for Ann McDaniel, Caitlin Dickey, John Barton, Caitlin Young, Mark Duggar, Mrs. Aspinwall, uh, prayers for Don's friend Alex, Mike Collins, Don Steele, Terry Cameron, Tammy Schumann, Fran Sutherland, James Moxley, Ronnie Hart, Derek Vaughn, Ashley Bryan, Amarn Mock, Mary, Mary Ellen Sellinger, Gertrude Kessler, Hank Heller, Sarah Mestler, Carol Tyler, John Warren, and also for our long-term folks, Lisa Bush, Jason Patterson, Ann and Ted Spittler, Sharon Payne, Carolyn Boyd's son, Rick, Paul Wonski, Brenda Dasher, Mr. Daniel Dasher, Sarah Smith, Mary A. Hubbard, Aaron May Hubbard, Isabella Sharehouse, and Miss Virginia DeSalvo. Lord, in your mercy. God, we remember before you our departed friends and relatives. And we lift up the family of Charles Boney, Mike Sigmund, Gail Page, Rudd, Nikki Bevel, Dave Pennington. Thank you for allowing these people to touch our lives in the way you ordered it to take place. We are better Christians because of these relationships. Help us all to remember the ultimate relationship, which is with you, our Heavenly Father. We look upon your face in glory everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Send the light of your truth into all the earth. We lift before you today our ministry partners, Danny and Rebecca Deloach, Carol and John, Shaney Felt, Jimmy Rutland, Kristen Work, Christy Krill, Amber Hall, and Methyl Baritime, Savannah, and Christ the King Church in Kansas. Lord, in our mercy. Heavenly Father, we ask a prayer for the folks at Messiah Lutheran Church. Um, just please keep those in that congregation in your loving care as Pastor Dave and his family transition to Bible Lutheran Church. We ask that the Holy Spirit, Spirit please comfort those hurting and with anxieties. Lord, in your mercy. All these and other things you see that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again, that we might have everlasting life. We know he now lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, He Leadeth Me, page 501.